Dust collection for every tool is very important and also pretty convenient. And especially for tools like a jointer or a planer, because these machines produce a lot of dust. The only problem with this dust is that it has quite a lot of volume and takes up a lot of space in the dust collection bin. And this means that I have to empty the bin more frequently and I really don't want to do that. So my idea is to build a secondary separator that goes in between the dust collector and this machine. And it will then just separate these chips in an extra dustbin. And then these are all packed in a one place and I can burn them. Like I do with all my lathe chips. So let's go. I designed it in SketchUp and as you can see I have a fin baffle on a segmented wooden bucket. I made it with three different bucket sizes and finally sticked with the middle sized one because it looks just right and the bucket is still pretty big. And now I'm going to show you how I made this wooden bucket. I didn't want to spend too much money on this project so I tried to make this bucket out of just these two pieces of wood. I only paid 5 euros for these two pieces and the whole bucket was designed to be made out of these two pieces. Now at first cutting them to a rough length. I clamped a scrap piece to my fence that acts as a stop block for repeatable cuts. Next making one side straight on the joint hole. And then one edge so I have two square reference surfaces. Then preparing the band saw for resewing, which includes just a crappy feather board. The quarter inch or an our metric weld 6mm blade I use is probably not the best for resewing, but it's the best and only really sharp blade that I have right now, and as you can see, it cuts down the wood with ease. After the first resaw pass, I jointed one side again. And then resawing a second time. The fence was set so that I get three equal sized slices. I got all the pieces cut and the leftover ones that are too thin and one of them lost a knot. So I still have 24 pieces, enough for the bucket. Now I'm gonna plane them all to a consistent thickness. Thanks for jointing in between resawing, I now only have to plane once. Okay, now comes the part that really matters. I want the bucket to be made out of 24 segments and for that to work they need to be cut at an angle and now I'm figuring out what angle I need. It's actually pretty simple. I have the 360 degrees of a full circle, divide this by 24, tells me 15 degree, but I need that angle on both sides so that means dividing by 2 again and I get 7.5 degrees. I try to set my really not so good table saw as close as possible to that angle. And next simply cut all of the pieces with this bevel on one side. So before I cut the other bevel, it is really critical how far the fence is from the blade because the width of the strips determines the diameter of the bucket. To set the fence right I made a test cut in scrap and then measured the gap. Then adjusting and repeating this until the fence had the right distance and cut the other side of all of the pieces. All the pieces are cut, and next bringing them to the right length. This went pretty fast. Then I prepared some strips of tape with the sticky side facing up on my bench. And then putting all of the strips one after the other onto the tape. In theory you do that and then can roll the whole thing up into a nice cylinder. But as you can see not all works perfectly on the first try.
well it didn't come out perfect you can see there's a lot of wiggle and a lot of gaps inside but screwing up on a 24 segmented circle is not too hard just imagine if I'm just off about a tenth of a degree that adds up 48 times because I cut 48 times so a tenth of a degree off means I'm totally about 4.8 degree off but I was shooting for a diameter of 35 centimeters 35 and 35 perfect but then I noticed that the tape stretches quite a bit and I thought that only three strips went enough to hold it together sufficiently so I removed them and put a single strip between each of the pieces. Oh yeah, that's actually better than before. I made a disc out of OSB and it goes inside. When I close it and make sure that it's a circle shape. I laid it out again and prepared three band clamps and the disc so I'm ready for the glue up. Because this is quite a big glue up I didn't have time to get many different camera angles. I also was a little bit afraid of it collapsing while I set it up because I only had this one try. Wow, that makes for a lot of glue squeeze out. I wiped it away with a wet rag. Okay, now trying to put in the disc. Oops. I think I have to remove this disc in about one or two minutes, because otherwise the glue will stick to it and the disc will stay in there. So I have to work fast again. After all the band clamps just hold it in place. Most of the clamping work was done by the tape. So now I just let it dry overnight. Thanks to these strips of tape there's no glue squeeze out on the outside. As a collection bucket this needs to be airtight, so before I go on I have to fill some small knot holes and other small gaps with epoxy. Once all that was dry I sanded the outside with the drum sander and by hand. Well, not really, but with a handheld sander. You may think sanding the inside smooth is harder than the outside, but I get a tool for that. This here, it is a portable drum sander. It has a shaft in the middle and the handle is a bearing. Here's the drum and this attaches to a drill, like so. This was actually the first time I really used this tool and I can tell it is a lot of fun and also really effective. Unfortunately it draws a lot of current so I quickly had to switch to a bigger drill. Next this bucket needs a bottom and a rim that keep the circle shape and provide more rigidity. I use 12mm or half inch Baltic bird for that. I cut out the circle on the bandsaw and sanded three flat spots onto the edge. You will see why I made this later on. Back at the bandsaw I cut a smaller circle out of the big one which will be the bottom. And because I still need the bigger one as the rim, I re-glued it with a strip that's the thickness of the bandsaw curve. Okay, now I got the rim and the bottom out of this one disc. This is the leftover. Oh yeah, the rim has the snug fit I was shooting for. Great! And the bottom has an interesting fit. then gluing them in place.
because the bucket wall is segmented and the bottom is perfectly round I ended up with a lot of gaps around here and I need to fill them because this whole bucket needs to be airtight. I did this by filling them with a mixture of bandsaw dust and glue. Then I put the light inside the bucket and looked for light gaps and I found quite a few. I marked them so I know where I need to fill some more. And once that was done and everything was sanded smooth again, I put on a oil based varnish. I thinned it a little bit and yes, it kind of looks like, well, you know. Hopefully this varnish will seal also the smallest gaps in the wood and prevent warpage so there won't develop new gaps over time. Now it's the next day, but the varnish is not fully cured yet and I also need to put on a second coat of this oil based varnish. But now that I know the inside diameter of it, I can work on the thin bevel part of this chip separator. But I will do that in my next video.